All right, we're live. Uh, <clears throat> thanks for coming, everybody. This is uh, going to be a, a lot of fun. Uh, we're doing a Frazetta study tonight, and actually on Eric's screen, which is right over there, you can see the picture that we're going to draw. Logistically, I don't really know how to get that up on the screen so we can see it the whole time. I'll have it up on, on the screen in front of me, so I'll see it. And you'll see the picture as we go along, and you can find that picture pretty easily on Google. So if you want to follow along and you want the reference, just you know look up for that on Google and you'll find that one. It's it's a very famous picture from them. So what we're going to be doing, oh, and did I say thank you everybody for coming? I think I did, but thank you again. Good to see Henry Jeremy here and Extreme Babies here, San Andreas, <clears throat> Eddie. I'm just reading who I can see right now, but I know a bunch of you guys are here. Russ is here. So uh, yeah, um, we're going to jump into this. Before I do though, I just want to quickly mention uh, our our sponsor, um, Comics on Coffee. Uh, I'm going to show you what I'm drinking right now. Check this out. So this is Sinestro from Green Lantern Corps Coffee, dark roast. It's open, actually, because this is what I'm drinking right now, so I already opened it. But yeah, it's got awesome artwork on both sides. Very, very cool. Um, this, in, this one, I think, is my favorite, actually, so far. This is awesome. Uh, I also have... Uh, Jay Fabok Batman coffee, and I have. Does it taste like Jay Fabok? It tastes just like him. Yep. Uh, I want to say, is that Kurt Swan? You think? Mm, maybe. Maybe Let's I'm see. not sure. Uh, but Superman coffee and an awesome looking picture, and you get you know a panel from uh, a classic Superman comic on the back, and I've got a bunch. I've got Green Lantern coffee, which is great. Um, I had one of these before too. It's really good. And oh wait, hold on. Blue Beetle coffee. Haven't tried that one yet. That's a new one. And Lord of the Rings coffee, which I also have not tried, but it looks great. And so I'm gonna have that pretty soon too. So there you go. Also, they sent me a mug, a Comics on Coffee mug, which is very. Ryan uh, does art. Says Neil Adams art is great. It's, it's Neil. Yeah, it's Neil Adams. Adams. It's Neil Adams. Thank yeah. you, guys. All right. Um, so this is my Comics on Coffee mug, which they sent. Very, very cool. And the coolest part, it has Frank Miller Batman on the back. I mean, look at that. It's pretty awesome. And uh, you can get this uh, on their website, comicsoncoffee.com. Uh, check it out. Um, I have a, uh, a discount code. Just type in David Finch. I think that's it. I'm pretty sure. I apologize. I think Russ knows. All right. Um, so that's it. That's our moment for our sponsor. Thank you so much, Comics on Coffee. Uh, it's great stuff. And thanks for sending all this stuff. And um, definitely check them out. They're a family-owned company. And they have really been great to, to me and to uh, to our channel. So, all right. We're going to jump into it. <laughs> Eric's already he's getting ahead. Yeah, David's so fast. I have to kind of... All right, here we go. Let me get my reference up. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and draw this from the ground up. Um, I, whoop, shoot. Well, which uh, what tools are you guys using? Uh, well, right now I'm just using a pencil. So this is just my regular drawing, uh, drafting pencil. Um, and uh, I'm going to get the sketched in really quickly. So I uh, just start with the head kind of here. And, I want to keep them pretty small. We're going to do this in two hours. Uh, and I've done all of these so far in two hours. By the, oh, you know what? I should show you guys. Okay, so let me show you what I've done so far. So I've done a few of these. And uh, this is the first one. Um, this is the second one. Uh, third one. And this is the fourth one. We're painting a male figure today, and actually, I'm going to be honest with you guys. We're painting a male figure because it is so incredibly difficult to find a Frazetta female figure reference that isn't naked, and I can't really do that on a show. So, I like the really third one. What's that? I like the third one uh, the most. Yeah, well, yeah, well you, got a, you got her tush pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it's all Frazetta, you know, and uh, the original is a lot nicer. I, and that is really, that's going to be, uh, arm's a little low. That's going to be the case with all these, unfortunately. Well, uh, you can't they, compare yourself to Frazetta. I mean, come on. That's... Yeah, and that's that's really what it comes down to, you know. And that's why we're doing these studies. You know, if I was Frazetta, I wouldn't need to do this. We would just, you know, 
be Frazetta. Frazetta esque. Frazetta, yeah. So I'm just going to basically wrap this in. Um, get his body in here. What's been the um, most difficult part so far in when you've been trying to, I guess, emulate his style? Um, his his uh, tones are, while they're really stark and they're really like in, in this picture here that we're looking at, unfortunately, you can't really see it. Um, his light to darks are, are very, very clear and, and you can see his shadow is very clearly defined, mm -hmm. but it's actually really subtle. And um, I've done Frazetta studies before, but doing painting studies is a whole other thing. And that's uh, aside from just his use of color. I'll look at a picture like this one here is relatively monochromatic, I would say, honestly. But I, I know from experience that it's really, really not. And look at this, look how far I came out. Dang it. Need so the colors, the colors for you is, is what's more, most difficult? It, the color, but it, you know, color is so dependent on tone also. And uh, okay, the arm, I think I'm gonna put that at a bit of a higher angle. This is always the hardest part is just making sure this stage really works and then everything else kind of flows from there pretty pretty well when i say that we'll see how this goes uh, every picture that i've done so far has been like this high wire act of i feel like i'm failing i feel like i'm failing and then it starts to come together by the way i want to mention too we are painting in a method that we learned from greg staples uh, we had greg as a guest uh several months ago and he was an incredible guest and honestly uh, too advanced, you know? I mean, I hate to say it that way, but like we just weren't ready. Um, and he, he taught us stuff. Like what he did is he really taught me how to paint properly and Eric, all, both of us. And uh, it's taken us, it's taken me a little while to, to finally accept the fact that I can get so much out of it, so much more than what I was doing. And part of the reason it's so hard to accept is it's not more difficult, according to Greg, <laughs> he says but definitely a, a real challenge for me to get my head around. Uh, it certainly has been so far, but I, I'm feeling like every picture is going a little bit easier. Once we start with paint, you'll really see I, I'm going to be building up from light and I'm used to building up from a mid-tone and using, um, using my, uh, like a, a basic underpainting, just a, a wash as a mid-tone and it makes establishing lights easier but it also really kind of mutes out and and homogenizes the color in a way that can be fine but it's not what i'm trying to get here uh and greg was just able to get such incredible color from what he was doing it's something that we just couldn't achieve and so that's why i'm i'm really focused on on learning how to do it properly This foot is a killer. I may just leave it out. Put some smoke around it. Yeah. I'm gonna put a giant rock there. Yeah. It's in the front of him, so you can't just do a cape. But yeah, you got rocks, you got smoke. There's a lot of tricks. I'll put a. I'll just spill a bunch of paint there or something. Mm -mm. I'm going to say, Eric, for the foot, you really want to just start to like think in terms of just shapes a little bit. If it like, oh, if it feels like, oh, it's really. That is the worst angle for me with a foot right there. Yeah. See, this is why you should be doing it. And look, you know what? We're uh, we're trying to get a study done and we're all under pressure. So I don't want to give you too hard a time. But all right. So that's basically I'm just going to kind of look it over and make sure that things are kind of where I want them. Chin's going to be here. I'm going to work my way up through his face to make sure it lines up with his hand proper, his arm properly. The better I can get this stage, the easier everything really is to draw anyway. Once it, we, once we paint, it's a whole other story. Are you using um, watercolors? Acrylic. Acrylic. He actually has a lot of watercolor for Zeta, more than I really realized. Didn't he and do a lot of his clumps in watercolor? He did, and gouache. 
Um, something I really want to do is we uh, we had Brian Stelfreeze uh, on. I think he was the last stream that we did, and uh, we really learned a lot about uh, how to work with with acrylic like watercolor with watercolor also. And uh, I want to start experimenting with some of Frazetta's watercolor pictures and see what I can get using uh, Brian's technique because it was it was such a great technique. Ah, that's gonna work well enough for me to get started. <clears throat> Vin Vinicius says it's good to see Eric's improvement. It really is, yeah. I mean, Eric doesn't appreciate it much. He appreciates the comment, I'm sure. But yes. yeah, he's been improving like gangbusters, and you don't see it when you're in the middle of it. So, yeah, it is true. Yeah, All right. definitely, definitely do appreciate it. Thank you. So what I'm going to do here is, is really try and capture as much of this as possible. Um, given the time constraint is I need to be able to draw this and paint it kind of, you know, <laughs> all within two hours. So it's a little bit. A little bit daunting. Uh, yeah, yeah, a little. And I, I really do try to hard deadline myself to two hours with these because um, I don't you know, have my actual job. So. Uh, I, I managed to do well four of them really within the last week, and it, you know with two hours it's just look this is my hobby it's my defense you know I'm not getting work done while I do these I know but you have to take time for yourself too right absolutely yeah when Dave and I draw together we uh, we sketch super fast and get down to the nitty gritty just to try and um, uh, just to try and get painting because the goal is to just put paint on paper and uh dave and i'll be talking a lot about doing small small studies like this and the reason why you want to do that is because it is small and it is fast you're getting to learn quicker than if you were to uh you know do a 20-hour paint you're knocking these out in you know one to two hours and then learning what you need to learn and then going to the next one and improving on the mistakes that you made so that's the goal anyway yeah what size paper are you guys working on uh someone was asking it, it kind of looks kind of small in relation to the it's pretty small if you look at my hand it's it's not huge and i'm this is arches paper and i just tore a piece of it off yeah and also working smaller here kind of helps too so you don't have you're not having to make these you know again big elaborate paintings Within reason. Within reason. By the way, I'm I'm kind of going a little bit rough here too, and I'm going to end up having to um, clean things up a little bit and probably make a few changes. So I'm really just kind of getting things established still. I'm going pretty dark because I want to make sure you guys can see it. I'd probably normally go a little lighter than this just so I'm not having to erase something too dark, but uh, it makes it really difficult to see. So I'm going dark, but. I'm gonna, I'm gonna refine this a little bit before we. Erase that whole thing. Did you guys watch the Deadpool trailer today? No, but you know what yeah, I've been yeah. watching. I've been watching. Yeah. Uh, Fallout. Oh, is that good? Awesome. You know that the sales of Fallout and people playing has gone up again? I've been thinking about it. I have I've, four, and I'm thinking of installing it again. Yeah, well, I haven't had as much time. I've been cooking a lot, you know? So that's what I'm kind of doing with my, what would be video game time, I'm trying to do something a little more productive. But, <laughs> uh, by the well, way, today... It's good for your mental health, you know? It is. Are you getting it, Jason? I <clears throat> I bought the like the one of the first few. I forget which one, and I didn't last long. Um, I'm still stuck on the zombies, uh, the Call of Duty one. Oh yeah, yeah. I I've just been playing it. a ton of Hell Divers. Which one was it? Hell Divers. <clears throat> is that a different uh, game type? Yeah, it's a uh, it's a it's a four player co op, and uh, you're fighting Terminators, which is basically like the 
insects or the starship troopers if you want to think of it that way and then they have automatons which is like terminator so you're uh you and three other buddies are defending super earth as it, as it were yeah yeah I haven't, pretty, tried that. I haven't tried that pretty one. uh pretty pretty fun game i just have to run around asking people to be part of their group <laughs> Yeah, playing with randoms is always the rub. Yeah. I'm antisocial even online. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I'm antisocial enough. I do not play those games. There's no way. Any game where I have to interact with other people, I'm out. That's oh, yeah. well, I used to play like NHL and the sports games, and I would get so angry <clears throat> when some young kid would, you know beat me up and then start trash talking me and throw the <laughs> through the window. <laughs> I want to mention quickly yeah. um, what I'm doing here, and you can't see it, unfortunately, because I don't have the reference really readily available to see, but his chest lines up perfectly really with the peak of his arm here, of his tricep. And I'm really trying to be aware of those kinds of um, those kinds of things it makes it really easy to very quickly get your kind of coordinates down while you're uh drawing uh to make something that, like I, I don't normally have to like normally I'm, I'm making it up so it doesn't matter but if you're looking at reference something that can be a real help is is just being aware of those kinds of things and then just making sure to line up your work using those are you drawing a scabbard and all that um hmm well, I'll draw it in and we'll see if I get a chance to paint it. Yeah. Little loin cloth. Always find it the hardest to get back to those once you're concentrating on the big picture and trying to get all the local colors in. Yep. Always leave that stuff, unfortunately, all the way. Until it's too late. In other news, your book is almost uh, ready to be shipped. Oh, great. So, so there you go. For those of you guys that have ordered the book, and thank you, uh, it's, it's on the way. To us, anyway. It's to good. us. Yeah. Yeah, it still take a little bit, but that's great. All right, Dave. I'm going to take a breath while you. You're going super. Uh, Detailed with you, you, you're still going to use your burn number pencil, right? Yeah, yeah. So, something that Dave and I have switched to we used to uh, really go very contrasty using a black colored pencil, and we found that uh, just in experimentation and just deep thoughts, I guess, that uh, using a burn number pencil just works a little bit better, uh, just to liven up shadows a bit more. So, we'll be using that uh, right after this step. Yes. Yeah, and the drawing will really kind of come together. Like right now, this is ugly, and I, I'm aware. But uh, for me to really finish this is actually a little counterproductive. So I'm just kind of going with it and allowing it to just be a bit of a simple uh, contour drawing right now. And I can see I'm already got a... Yeah, I've come off of the... That right there. That right there. This is where I, in, I used to do these all the time. And it's amazing how much you, you think you have things established and you really don't like that right there. That's that's better. It's a better angle. All right. Does he have an any or nowdy? That's the question. <laughs> it's in shadow. It's an unknown. <laughs> F. <laughs> I don't see a I don't see a dash of light there, so I'm guessing it's an any. Yeah, it's gonna be an any. But if Jason really wants me to, I can add I'm just curious. that now. highlight there. That would be anatomically correct. Or, you know. <laughs> well, the real question is for me, what reference did he use, if any, with these figures? I know, I mean, he could just draw out of his head. I know he used reference because I, I've got books of his where you can see him uh, modeling or using his friends. So he does use reference. But I, I think for the most part, his figures are really created. So Jason was thinking it's Clint Eastwood. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think that face is very much Clint Eastwood. And so, you know, 
There was pictures of Clint with uh, with Frazetta, right? Uh, am I yeah. mistaken? Uh, I've seen that somewhere. Yeah, there's uh, pictures of Clint Eastwood with, with him. There's Sylvester Stallone. There's uh, um, the Star Wars guy. Emil? George Lucas? George Lucas, yes, thank you. I'm forgetting George Lucas. Mark Hamill? I don't know. You can go. Not Mark Hamill, but yeah, George Lucas. So yeah, until I kind of get this whole thing roughed, I can't really assess it. As far as <clears throat> if you like the anatomy, if you like the layout, if you like the... If I feel like I kind of captured it properly, you know? Or if I like if I'm off somewhere really badly, but so far I, I think I'm all right. Hopefully that's not famous last words. Well, it's art. I mean, it's all subjective. Now at the end of the day, uh, no, it's not. No, or at least to you, it's not. It's not to anyone. Why not? Because if I look at it and say that's that's amazing, I, you know, I love it. But you look at it and say, I drew this knee wrong. I drew this foot wrong. Said, yeah, but objectively, it's not good. So you might like it, but it is objectively not as good as it could be. And I, like, I think I could explain why it's not as good as it could be, and you would agree, which makes it objective. My opinion. Maybe. Like, I, I think most of modern art is designed to be objectively trash. How come? Uh, well, because William Bergerow took months to do a painting, uh, whereas, you know, okay, look, and I don't want to conflate too much because I'm a huge, huge fan of, uh, of all of the um, Impressionists. I love their stuff, but they can do a painting in, in no time compared to like a Bergerow mm -hmm. uh, or like some of the, the great Pre-Raphaelites that were big in the salon at the time in the 1800s. And then it just kind of went from there. Once once the idea behind the art became more important than the art, uh, all bets were off. And you know, um, now you had critics that could just decide what was valuable, and they were never letting that power go. And that's where we are now. That's my opinion. Maybe. Uh, I mean, I hear what you're saying. I feel like, in part, that's true. But also, you just find the you know collectors now that will find value in it. For one reason or the other, whether it's... well, most collectors have no taste. <laughs> well, they just like what you tell them to like. Uh, Hansel has a uh, super chat for you. Always feel so inspired by these video uh, study videos. How many hours do you recommend at a minimum of practice every day? Obviously, more the better. Okay, the more the better, uh, for sure, definitely. The more the better, but you also have to deal with reality, and so I would say. Look at it this way. If you only practice a couple of times a week, will you get better? Yeah, but it's going to be very difficult. Um, if you're practicing a couple hours a day, that's a it's a commitment. I mean, when I was learning, I practiced probably 10 hours a day, realistically. Uh, but I lived in my mother's basement. I had no family. I had no bills. I wasn't even in school. I had dropped out of high school, which I don't recommend, but I, I did. So I had a lot of time. Um, I also had a deadline. <laughs> they were they were very much like, a, you're going to have to find a job and you have X amount of time or you're just, you're, we're kicking you out. So um, how, the pressure how, Well, how long do you spend uh, at the table daily when you're on your deadlines? Uh It'd be easier for me to just say, okay, so I uh, drive my son to school. That takes an hour. It's a half an hour there, half an hour back. Well, this is the price we're paying for living out in the country. And uh, um, I, I get home and I start working at around, it ends up being just after nine. I work until about 3.30. And... Uh, then I, I spend time with Meredith, my wife, and uh, then I work at night too. So for a couple of hours anyway. So it's, you know, it's not the kind of hours I was able to spend when I was younger. That's having family will do that. But uh, do you stay up late? I'm sorry, I missed, I think I missed that last part of what time. Well, that's the other problem. I can't stay up late anymore. 
I used to, but I, I can't do it anymore. Well, you have to be up to, you know, be functional. So, uh, yeah, and and that's really what it's what's happening is I'm just finding as I'm getting older, uh, my level of function is is dropping if I don't get sleep. So, I'm with you. Yeah, we're not young anymore. So yeah, if you're young, there's another factor. Take advantage. Stay up 36 hours. It's fine. You can do it. But when you get older, that's that's a lot harder. Uh, just as a side note, we will be at C2E2 this weekend. In case anyone is in the Chicagoland area, come and visit us. Are you going there? Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm driving actually, which is nice. It's it's close enough. I can just drive. It's great. There's a marshmallow cafe. It's going to be amazing. I'm on a diet. That's not for you. It's for me and uh, Isaac. Yeah, oh, that's true. Yeah, I'm bringing my son. So, yeah, he'll, he'll definitely. <laughs> he's not on a diet. Yeah. Uh, Henry's asking if you had a chance to talk to Klaus about uh, coming back to Monday Night Draw. Uh, I, you know what? I haven't talked to him. Is he going to be in? Uh... Yeah, he'll be there uh, with us this weekend. So. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to have him on again. Like he was such a great guest, wasn't he? He was, he was great. He's always fun to talk to. He's a he's a a fountain of knowledge. Yes. Yeah, he's great. We had a real great stream with him. Yep. Yeah, I would I would love to do that again for sure. So I'm, I'm trying to, as quickly as possible, just basically establish my darkest darks. I, I don't want to get too carried away. I do know, though, that the darks are very brown in this picture. So I can kind of get away with with using a lot of brown. If they're really not, or if they're really light, like if the picture's a higher key, then I can't do this. I have to be a little more careful. So this one, I think I should be all right. Yeah, the last painting session we had, I went way too dark, and it took the rest of the time just to work all the opaques back so it's yep with the the stealth freeze one uh no dave and i uh, did the frisetta study on the weekend oh, and no. i kind of botched that one so hopefully i don't do that here yeah, well, that, end, no. it, it came together at the end but it just it was yeah it was way that's too how dark. my first one went eric like yeah. you know i went way too dark and i feel like I'm, I'm learning a little bit more each time you know and i, I I'm going to be honest, I feel very confident right now. Like, I think this is going to work out and it's going to be easy. And I'm a little worried too, because <laughs> I, I know how that goes. <laughs> this like uh, Mike Tyson that says they're nervous before every fight, right? If you're not nervous, something's going to go wrong. Yeah, well, there you go. So you guys are, the last <laughs> ones have actually kind of worked out all right. I was decently happy and they're not for Zeta, you know. I'm, I'm sure it'll but, work out. It's just a matter of time, you know. Sometimes it takes a bit more noodling than other times. Well, and that is going to happen with these is there'll be a certain amount of uh, time where it's just looking like it's not really kind of coming together. And then it starts to ideally. I mean, it had so far. We'll see. <clears throat> so, Jason, are you a fan of modern art? Um, well, I'm a fan of good art or art that I like. I wouldn't say, you know. I like it. I like a little bit of everything. I'm very eclectic, I would say. I'm very um, opinionated and closed-minded. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's true. I mean, I've seen stuff that makes me wonder why you know they price it the way they do, or why people buy it, you know, or you know. Uh, that it's that price you know some someone spending twenty thousand dollars on that didn't quite make sense to me but at the end of the day it's what they like and they find value in it so yeah and you know what it's bringing people pleasure so yeah not for me to judge no, no if you like it then enjoy it i mean i don't understand the banana thing you know or a peeled banana you know on a on a canvas <laughs> and you know, someone buying it for a hundred thousand dollars, that doesn't quite add up for me. But. I mean, I'll say this art has no intrinsic value. It doesn't do anything other than be art. 
And so strictly speaking, yes, uh, it, it is subjective in that way. I just disagree with the priorities of the, you know, uh, what I'd like to see is, is some of the, the old masters of illustration, uh, be, um, more widely respected and widely known, you know, mm -hmm. versus some of the stuff like Andy Warhol is, uh, it's not, for, it's not for me. What can I say? Right. Well, I think more comic illustrators are being recognized and, uh, mainstream, I would say, you know, with, with, with prices <clears throat> fetching hundreds of thousands of dollars, it's hard to ignore, I would think. Yeah, no, you, you're, you're not wrong. It is true. See, I should really shut up. Well, uh, everyone's got their, you know, their, their perspective on it. It's, I don't know. We had this conversation, we were at an art expo this weekend with Klaus and Lee Weeks and a few other guys, and just talking about, uh, the art in general and you know, looking around the room and seeing really expensive stuff. Yeah. And uh, just saying, well, you know, I only buy art that I like because I like to look at it and I want to hang it on my wall. And if it happens to go up in value, then amazing. And if not, then you know, that's fine too. But there are people that, you know, look at it as investments, which is okay as well. Well, in terms of investment of the stuff you have, uh, Would you say even more successful more often or or less? Because you buy what you like, and yeah, it's not really gonna necessarily. Yeah, I guess it gets to a point where you're if you're spending so much money, like some of these guys are ten thousand, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand, like it gets to be expensive. Then you know they take a look at it and say, okay, well if something happens, uh, can I can I sell it? Can I get money out of it to help pay for a car wreck? Whatever. Hopefully, that right. Happens. Then you start looking at it that way, but you know. I never buy anything just because I think it's a good buy, you know, that I'll make money on it. At least generally, I don't think I have in the past. But I want to look at it. I want to enjoy it. You know, I want to hang it up and show it off. Yeah, I have to admit, I've, I've never bought anything um, for an investment. I, I'm i not thinking, oh, well, this will be worth nothing, and that's fine. Like, it's nice that it's worth something if it is. But, yeah, I, I buy the stuff I like. Kind of moving through here and just getting the stuff kind of thrown in. I'm being pretty loose, but most of this is really going to be much more established with, with color. So I don't want to get carried away. Especially, like Eric was saying, it's very quick and easy to uh, get yourself in a position where you've just gone too dark. And that's not a problem, but it kind of is. Like, it's it's just, it's really difficult. I find it really, really difficult to recover from that. Is, not, that, is that not what erasers are for? Well, you can't do that with paint. Mm -hmm. What you can do is just paint lighter over it and then darken it back down. But then it becomes like this whole job. Like, it's, you know. Uh, Gabriel Delato does... Um, pictures on no not everything but he does this quite a bit he does pictures on a black surface and to me that is like some kind of it's, magic. Yeah. it's incredible that he can do it it's just so counterintuitive and you know he also paints on white like he he's a master you know he's, yeah agreed so yeah, yeah um there's that but yeah, i find that incredibly difficult well we'll get to visit with him in uh in italy next month yeah, like Cuomo, it's coming up. He's a super nice guy as well. So. I've met him. Yeah, uh, I haven't talked to him, and it's been a long, long time. But um, well, we'll have to see if him on on the stream. Yeah, uh, if you would do it, you would definitely have him. I'm sure you guys would love to see him. By you yeah. guys, I mean you guys watching. Yeah. Well, me too. But Larry's going to be uh, with us in Dallas. Oh, um, nice. We'll see you there. We'll be hosting a uh, a dinner that uh, Fan Expo is going to post up on their website, I think, later this week. So keep an eye out. Um, we're going to have dinner with Dave and Arthur and the crew. So if you're interested in coming hanging out with us, having a nice meal. Arthur is Arthur Adams. Arthur Adams, yep. Uh, well, I'd like to just take a moment to point out that I know. <laughs> Blows me away all the time. 
you know, I, I think the first time I ever talked to him was probably six or seven years ago. And uh, Meredith just went up and she was talking to Joyce, his wife. Uh, and uh, so she basically forced me to talk. To him. And he's, he's the nicest guy in the world. Like he really, he's very approachable. He's great, but yeah. Yeah. Super fun to hang out with. Uh, yeah. Makes, makes conventions a lot of fun to, to be at. Eric, did you lose your accent? Yeah, I sound like Jason. Yeah. You gotta sound stupider then. <laughs> I think, like American. Yeah, I think, the, I think uh, yeah, Gord Oxbow's asking. I, um, that's Jason Schechter, and uh, this is me. So uh, mm -hmm. I have not lost my accent. No. As hard as I try, it's uh, still there. So I'm trying to get all these shapes basically thrown in as quickly as I can, but still not. I'm trying to delay the inevitable. Basically what it comes down to, and you know this, Eric, the, the more you fudge this stuff, the harder the job is yeah. later on. And the more clear this is, is obviously, you know. By the way, uh, I talked to Eric Kist. Oh, yeah. And, uh, He's going to be in Lake Cuomo, so we'll see him there. I tried to get him to come on tonight. He's busy. He's got he's got deadlines. Where where is he from? He's um, California. Yeah, California. But yeah, uh, I'd really like to have him come on again. Honestly, if Eric would have come on and done this, we would all just sat back and watch him do it. Yeah, <laughs> you want to see a real master uh, at work. Uh, that would be Eric. He's, he's he's incredible. You know, the more I'm doing this day, the more I'm I'm so skittish. I'm gonna go so light on my wash. Yeah, well, I'm definitely going light. You know, I just find it's easier for me to build it than to fix it. I think Greg uh, Greg Staples said he, he was gonna tune in. Oh, really? Yeah. That won't be no wrecking at all. <laughs> well, you know what? Greg is in, um, he's in the UK, so he won't be watching live. So if we really blow it, he'll see it, <laughs> but at least that'll be a delay. We'll be long gone. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies, Greg, because we're, we're like, we're trying to represent Greg's technique here as much as, you know what? It, uh, Greg's technique is like any artist. It, it is, um, so much dependent on on his mastery the medium and years of knowledge and all that kind of thing so while we're working with his technique it's not going to be greg it can't be we're we're just we're not him so yeah he's just so precise and so uh, efficient but he's also an incredible teacher and oh, yeah. while we might not be able to to be greg uh we certainly learned a lot and i think it's it's paying dividends here I think so. All right. So I'm basically ready to go. I mean, that's my, my guy kind of drawn in. And uh, thank goodness, because my pencil's almost done. <clears throat> so I'm going to lay out some paint. I'm going to start with, this is my burnt sienna. Uh, let's see. Um, burn number. Come out of the thing. Um, Pyro red. Eric keeps telling me that one of these reds isn't good, and I can't remember which. So hopefully it's not. Naphtho. Naphtho. Okay, good. Naphtho crimson is a little bit fugitive, but all right. Yellow oxide. That's this one right here. Uh, white. I'm not really going in any particular order. I'm kind of grabbing these just as I go. I use a lot of white, so I got a big, huge one. I also have Turner's yellow. Uh, you know. But, which I like because it's yellow, but it's it's still so I can I can go a little brighter than I can with um, yellow oxide, but not blow it out with yellow. I've got my um, yellow orange. I can just go a little bit hotter with my uh, my yellow, and then I've got my actual orange, I guess. So a little bit more. I just find I could use red, and I do use red, but orange is kind of a nice thing to have. This is my thalo green, which I'm going to be using for the shadows. The shadows are very brown. But in order to make them darker, like I won't use, be using black. Um, I'm 
my uh, uh, Elysium Crimson, which I'll be using with my Thalo Green. So if you mix Elysium Crimson and Thalo Green, you get black, uh, or you know, pretty close. So it works I think well. I'm going to use uh, Burn Umber and Ultramarine for this one, dude. Yeah? Yeah, because I'm not seeing much green. Oh, here we go. Ultramarine. I'm going to grab some of that, too. Ultramarine and Burn Umber gives you a nice uh, black. Oh, you know, I might actually just do that. I've got my Burnt Umber out. Um, so, you know, I might actually go that way instead. That is a good call. And I've got my uh, Raw Umber, which is really good for cooling skin tones without shifting them. Sorry about my paint jars farting. All right, I think that should do it for paint. Um, oh, you know what? Uh, a little bit of medium magenta, just because he's got his little uh, underwear on there. And uh, I've got brilliant purple. And uh, this is stuff I could mix, I know, but you know. Nothing wrong with convenience colors. Yeah, that's right. Convenience colors, there you go. All right, so I've got my brush. Um, which I didn't clean since the last time, so. And then I'm going to use this. So basically, what am I going to be doing? Eric, you're already going. I can't keep up. Dave, you're so fast. I got a every opportunity I get. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, putting the putting the pedal down. Dave right. is very efficient, so. I'm, uh... Okay. Uh, you know the other thing I'm going to use is a little matte medium. Um, I used this last time. Eric was, was recommending it. We learned this actually from Ariel Olivetti, a little matte medium. Uh, I can do this without it. You don't need it. You really don't. But it can make things kind of move around just a little more smoothly, and it's nice. So I'm going to use a little bit of that too. But it really will only be just a little bit. Um, and honestly, it'll be a little bit when I remember. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my first color. And for that, I'm going to, I want to stay really light. and and uh, not too um, chromatic. So I, I've got here. Here's what I've got. So this is my um, yellow oxide and uh, a little bit of um, raw umber just to, to kind of cool it down. Um, and then I'm going to use a little burnt sienna, which is totally defeating the purpose of my Look, if I knew what I was doing, I'd be for Zeta. There we go. And that might be a little bit warm. I'm just going to cool it with a tiny little bit of blue. <clears throat> What's the title of the piece you're drawing from? Dude with a sword. Dude, dude in bikini? With yeah, sword? I really don't know. And so I'm going really, really wet with my wash. Like, it's really wet. Let me get a little bit of that stuff in there. Just like that. Like barely any at all. And then I'm going to wet this brush down too. And so when I go in here, uh, ideally what I want this to do is just you can see it's it's really not covering much. Like I, I just want to get the area that I'm trying to tone. And I don't want to paint the whole thing yet. Uh, and about are... paper. This is uh, Arches. Arches um, hot press. And so the second brush is just um, making it blend. And I'm going to paint this all the way into my shadows because the more layers I get, the darker it'll get. And I, my shadows, it's fine to kind of get those colors in there. Uh, and what it's going to end up happening, a lot of my colors are going to be shifted weird because I'm, I'm kind of using this a little bit everywhere just to start to tone it. Uh, and so where it needs to shift, then I'll just shift it. Let's see, I can make this nice and soft just like that. Like this whole area here is very red and dark. But for now, I'm just going to get this kind of locked in. And that's going to be pretty dark here, too. I think I can kind of go dark there, the whole place. And Eric, uh, I don't know about you, but one of the biggest places I really suffer is I have no patience. Yeah. And so I just burn through this stuff so fast. And I know it's it's not ideal. Like it's not it's not great, but 
but it's what I do. So questions from the chat, anyone? Um, nothing, nothing at all yet. I've been trying to find the uh, Frazetta piece to post up on the... Uh, it, has a it takes a while. Something else that Dave and I have been finding is uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see one variation of the picture that's slightly colored different. And, you know, it, so you got to find one that uh, the final almost a hefty medium. There were quite a few that I saw, and they were just different, different colors and hue. The uh, which is fine, you know. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, it just means your picture will look probably different than what somebody that has the original one would have on their wall. But nah. I don't know if you remember, Dave. So, <laughs> Dave and I did studies about I don't know how long it was ago, a year or two ago, and uh, I had uh, blue light filter on my glasses. And uh, Dave was constantly commenting why my colors are off. Actually, I, it might have been the phone. I can't remember. There was some blue light filter. All my colors were off. I don't, I don't know if you remember, Dave. Yeah. It was uh, a little bit humorous for sure. So, those kind of things matter. Also, studio lighting. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, to be totally honest, I think that tone is so important. Um, like yeah. value is so important that I kind of don't care about color that I, I mean I do and I'm going to try as much as I can to try and represent the color that's here but if the color that I'm looking at here is yeah it doesn't matter so much to me anyway Eric is a purist <laughs> purist as long as it works if it doesn't then it so well. yeah I mean, you can't deny it. You are kind of a purist. Right. Can you help me in? Is it okay if I pop up the uh, Frazetta piece that uh, you're basing this off of? Are yeah. you kidding? That would be great. Yeah, that would be awesome. Which would be oh, awesome. Yeah, there we go. On over. There we go. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. You want me to keep it up? Yeah. Yeah. Right. We should, should have done this from the beginning. We're slow. Light. Uh, what's the name of the pencil you're using to draw and the paints? So the, the pencil that I, I use to draw, this right here, this is a Stadler uh, lead pointer. Or no, that's the sharpener. Lead holder. The lead uh, it looks like this. It just goes right in just like this. I use a 2H. And then the lead pointer is like this. You stick it in, you spin it around, and you can sharpen your pencil. So that's, and this is really the number one tool that I use really for all of my drawing. Um, the brushes that I'm using, these are Rosemary & Co. brushes, which uh, Greg, Greg Staples recommended that. That's exactly right. I can't paint like Greg Staples, but darn it, I'll get the brushes. <laughs> so yeah. And then, um, we use Prismacolor Dark Umber, I believe it's called, for the, um, the yes. design drawing and the shading. Yeah, it's Prismacolor Dark Umber. Uh, I think you could probably use any kind of brown, really. And I, I like it because I can get my outline in, but I'm not overpowering it with black. That gets really difficult to um, solve for later. This booth's very orange. I'm just going to go ahead and just get the tone in right now. Just to get it started. So that's basically layer one. Uh, wait. So that's basically layer one. There we go. And then I just start building from here. Um, and so I want to start going into the shadows a little bit more and darkening them out. And uh, for that, what we're we using, Eric, we're using. Uh, uh, you can use um, ultramarine and uh, burnt umber. Yeah. So we got. Uh, I've got my ultramarine right here. Um, and I've got my burn number here. 
And if I mix that, you can see I get a really nice dark color. Um, it's very dark. And then so you can lighten it and tone it and get a bit What I'm going to do is I'm going to start to warm it up with, because um, he's very warm in a lot of his spots. And for this, I, I used um, burnt sienna. And uh, I'm going to be going on pretty thin, so I can kind of get away with, uh, even though that's that's a bit of a darker muted color, I'm going to be adding uh, some of those warmer shifts, I think. Right now, I'm just going to start establishing some of my darks. I'm cheating a little bit because, well, no, I'm not, just not cheating, but I'm using a little bit more burnt sienna than any kind of chromatic black just so I can get some of that warmth because uh, I'm just, I just have the last study in mind and I totally messed that up. So I'm trying to preserve some of that warmth. One's bitten twice shy. Yeah. Are you going to be doing any backgrounds on this? No, <laughs> no, two hours. We have a little marshmallows in the back, right? I mean, it can't be that hard. <laughs> well, you want you you wanted the Addy, but that's a, that's another hour right there. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> this is what it's, it's like. Perfectly rendered. This is uh, watercolors, right? This is uh, acrylic. Yes. Now, this stage, you could be, uh, it's easy to mistake it for watercolor because we really are going in. We let in the paper uh, do a lot of the work here. Uh, this Archer's paper, it's 100% cotton, so it accepts uh, watered down paint very well. And use it to your advantage to get those nice washes in and uh, get some blending going. And, um, it's, it's, it's been a game changer for Dale and I, for sure. Yeah. Uh, really recommend this paper. You can you use that? I'm sorry? Where do we learn that? Greg Staples. Greg Staples. Yeah. <laughs> this is all Greg Staples with a little bit of Olivetti. Yes. Actually, uh, quite a bit of Olivetti. I mean, yeah, the whole underdrawing and everything was uh, pretty much... And I have to say, yeah, we had Ariel on quite a while ago. I really wonder just how much more we would get out of having him on now. We've learned so much. Oh, man. I, I, um, I think it was a few days ago. I was like, you know what? I need to try what Ariel did. And it, it, so much of it worked. Uh, yeah. Back then, Dave and I, it was kind of the beginning of the journey, basically. Yeah. And a lot of it is, uh, you know, you can only retain so much information at once. And, uh, yeah, it would be great having him on again. It would. Maybe I should send him a message. You should. Let's see if he'll do that. I'm going to say, Dan, I'm using a lot more burns here than I thought I was going to. Oh, yeah. But it makes sense, really. Uh, something else. The. The color on my screen is way off. And if anyone in chat knows how to fix that in OBS, or just please let me know, because I cannot get it right. It's a lot warmer than what you're seeing on the screen. Um, it's really muted and odd. The more I mess with it, the worse it gets. So I'm still really, really warm with all my shadows. Um, That's good. I went actually; it was pretty cool, relatively using the blue and the. But uh, so much of his shadow is is really just warm, just with a few hits of, of kind of colder, darker shadow. So, and I, I really want to you know try and so much as I can work in order, and not get ahead of myself. You know. Uh, it's probably your lighting setup. Yeah, it's definitely my lighting is part of it. I've got two very bright lights shining on me. And that's due to drawing. Like, I have to have the brightest light I can find. And uh, 
does mess with it a bit. But then again, David's got really bright light too, and he's his colors are perfect. So yeah, who knows? With technology. Yeah, you're using a Brio, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm using an Elgato base cam Pro, and might have something to do with that. Okay, um, a little bit more here. Yeah. Definitely orange in the shadows. Oh, uh, sorry, what? There's definitely orange, not burnt sienna, in, in the shadows. Yeah, which is why like, I'm, I'm going to kind of. I think it's. I'm going to take cadmium red light. All right. Let's see. Uh, choice. Huh? So it's a bold choice. Sure is. Uh, I might have a good excuse. My bottle is plugged. I have kept me orange. You know what? I have Quinn orange as well. And See, what, what I'm going through right now, I'm putting stuff down, and I'm ending up with paint all over the place. That is just working too fast. This is also from Greg, the Quinn Orange. If you can find it, buy it because they're discontinuing the pigment. So. <clears throat> cool. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting in some of my darker shadows. And I already have the color. I just, I'm going to use a patch of, you know what, I need to make more. So this is just my, this is the Eric's mixture. This is just blue with black, or blue, ultramarine blue with uh, burnt umber. So I, it doesn't look like I'm going to be using my um, my green at all. Do you know if uh, Frazetta did the backgrounds first? <clears throat> oh, no idea. Yeah, I actually don't know. Um, I don't know. I oh, you know it's way too dark. Dang it. Probably. You gener generally do you do the backgrounds first, or do you do the the foreground? I do the figure, and it's not the right way to work. But um, you know, maybe uh, chalk that up to another thing. Part of the okay. Here's part of the reason that I do that. I don't ever know where I'm going with the picture. I'm making it up as I go along when I'm doing my actual like art for myself, and so. Uh, it makes it difficult <laughs> to just you know, throw in a background when I have no idea what it's even going to be. Yeah, different artists do. I know, if, I think it's Federico Ricci, is that how you say his name? Uh, hopefully I'm not saying it wrong. He, uh, he does the background last because um, he likes to judge the atmospheric perspective afterwards. He wants to get it right. But I would say most artists do the background first just because you can get it you, you obliterate the white of the paper and you, you adjust the values of your main subject a lot better. Right. If you have your um, your picture really well laid out, you know exactly where you're going with it, then there are advantages. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, if you know what you're doing. <laughs> if you know what you're doing, then there are advantages. Great advice from our channel. You going to bake it there? No. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's probably something important to say too. We're very transparent right now. It's kind of what you want. Yeah, it's all just really thin washes. Just getting them in, just to get, in, get the shadow is kind of established. Um, and it is really going to be a, a case of yeah, going to be push and pull. Yes. So this is kind of stage one. Uh, I'm being very rough too. Like I'm not going to a smaller brush when I start roughing in his face. Uh, you know, I'm not here for. I want it to be decently accurate, but I also uh, we have a what time is it? Nine fifty nine. Eric, we're already an hour in. So yeah, time for a base, right? Yeah. Let's see. Let's see.
Uh, Richard Pace is here. Oh, great. Thank you for coming. He's great. All right. Good a time as any. To what? <laughs> Start putting in lights. Actually, something Greg does, which is uh, we're not doing here, is Greg does the lighting first and then puts the shadows in, which is, uh, again, you don't really know what you're doing. But yeah, look, part of my problem is I'm a comic artist. This is just it naturally fits with my um establish strong shadows kind of i i feel comfortable this way yeah. it's already it throws me so much just doing this as it is because he's totally white yeah. which i'm gonna fix in actually just a minute uh and let's do that and then also if you want to you can <coughs> add opacity and then go back into shadows very carefully but yeah, yeah. and i'm gonna do that i think we're both gonna end up doing that like there's a, a lot that we're kind of missing right now like so what i've got right now is um something but it's not what it needs to be so i'm going to use my indian yellow because it's a little brighter and indian yellow is super transparent and very vibrant well clean my brushes have fun with that one <laughs> ye of little faith i can't find titanium white i only have 50 bottles of it Some colors, like you add red, so I'm mixing up my color here and dropping stuff everywhere. And I add like the tiniest little corner of red and it instantly makes it really red. And I'm gonna put in a little um, raw umber just to kind of cool it. All right. Now what I'm gonna do is just kind of dump this everywhere uh, in the lights. And then uh, I can start to tone from it, but I just, it's too thick. And I forgot to, I haven't been using my um, matte medium. Forgetting. Get my other brush out here. All right. So I want to just start getting this um, pulled together. I can, I, I have a long way to go from here. Not a lot of time, but. But I find when I have this much white on the page, it's really difficult for me to think, you know? Yeah, there's uh, definitely something to that. Uh, Dan DeSantis uses um, black tape when he tapes his paintings down to try and obliterate um, white and to try and get a baseline. Yeah. I can't remember who it was that we spoke to. They might have been Dan too. Like for example, his hair, you, you want to get that in early because that gets your mind thinking of contrast with the hair. You can judge values a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So there's all different kinds of tricks like that, I guess. Yeah. So I, I think if, if we really know what we're doing, I'd just be yeah. throwing down the exact color right now. Like, boom, there it is. And it's perfect. We don't. I sure don't. So I'm building to it. Impatiently. So now from here, I'm going to start to, um, I'm not going to go white yet. What I want to do is start getting some of the warms that he has in his skin tone and, and some more nuance into my shadows. He's actually very warm here. 
Yes, yeah, that's why I just decided to stick with burnt sienna and a little bit of burnt under water around. Oh, NATO labor military. Yeah, so I can move. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm a little off. All right. All right. This is so this is kind of the color that I've got right now. Let's see what happens. I'm going to put it on here and then. Um, you got yellow ochre going on? Or? Yeah, not right now. So we'll see uh, see if this works. This is Yellow open really white is working out pretty well. All right. I'm getting paint everywhere. Henry says he likes a sword scabbard. Would it look better with it? Okay, yeah, fair enough. But yeah, add another hour. Yeah, only got so much time. This is a problem, Henry. It really is a, a, a time constraint on this. Sorry, I'm back. Try and get as much as we can get done. done. Everything good? House not on fire? Nope, not at all. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I tend to get the most impatient when I'm starting to put these colors in. Because it doesn't look right. But the only way to do it is, or at least the only way I know to do it, is this. And so this is like first pass. And I'm hoping that it'll come together. I don't know. And I really don't know. Is there like a a number that I need to hit of doing these things before I can just say, okay, this is what's going to happen next. What do you think, Eric? Um, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just reps. So <laughs> I don't think there's a real fast way to it. Practice is what they Practice. say. Yeah, it's just constant, constant time with the brush. And I say this all the time on, you know, tutorial videos, you have to practice, you have to do, you know, and for myself, I'm so impatient. I don't want to do it, which is. Well, I can tell you how to do it, but I don't want to. Um... Well, David, I've been waiting for you to say something. I, what are we doing here? You know? This is your journey. This is your art journey. Mine, mine was a bit quicker, so I'll let you guys go through it. Yeah, uh, letting us suffer here a bit. <laughs> Snickering back there. <laughs> And I would think there's probably a point where you do enough of these and you could start to really anticipate and just go your own way a little bit even and whatever. We're not there. I'm certainly not there. It's still darker. And I'm very red here. So we'll see how that plays out. Something else that Dave and I have been practicing a lot is glazing. It was something we... Well, I think we ignored it for a while just because it was wasn't the easiest thing but uh glazing has been very helpful lately just to you know try and hue shift certain things yes yeah and that's coming for both of us as uh as it gets closer like it's like we're, we're circling around the goal right now a little bit Red right there. And some of this red is actually pretty orange. So I might be kind of missing the mark on that way too. Well, let's bring in a little more orange. What I'm doing is I just laid down a patch of orange and then I'm taking some of the color that I had a minute ago and kind of mixing it together. And I'll put some white in, it's a little dark. Yeah, extreme maybe. Isn't it 10,000 hours to become a master? Ah, I don't know about it. Maybe, glass maybe glass. some people. Maybe it's a hundred hours for others. So I don't think there's a. Yeah, there. It, Malcolm Gladwell. It, it's it's like putting formulas to things that I don't think yeah. necessarily. I think it's a very discouraging thing to say, really. It's not something you know, a lot of people might not uh, might see the number and stop right away. But, uh, for some folks, this, this just comes naturally. They still got to work at it, but you know. 
Yeah, for every 10,000 hours, there's a Sean Gordon. Yeah, yeah there's a 10 hour guy. Yeah. And so I'm not worrying about, like, I'm kind of putting this a lot of places, and I'm not worrying too much about the fact that it's going to be a little too warm here and there, and it, because I can always come back in and, and alter it. But right now, what I, uh, I'm starting to build up opaque colors. I don't remember to use my second brush to soften things. You don't remember right away, and then you're stuck. Yeah, there is some advantage to the paper. We it kind of uh, keeps that keeps it wet long enough where sometimes you don't need it. But yeah, it, that's another thing. I don't know if you've noticed. Dave and I keep reaching for another brush. Uh, you just come in with the other one, and you can push the paint around. Uh, yeah, insanely helpful. Yeah, and the goal for for both of us is to get to the point where you're starting to just spot colors in here and there like oh you know a little bit of this there a little bit but we're not there yet like that's going to be having tough. to force myself to slow down i don't want to pick up paint like last time <clears throat> Make a hole in your paper, in your paint with acrylic. It's so hard to fix. Yeah. What are we looking at for time? Ten eleven. We're still doing all right. Yep. Want to leave a good what half hour for the uh, crotch? Uh, yes, that's yeah, definitely. It's gonna it's gonna take the most uh, love, you know. Got quite a bit of warm in his face, and I'm I'm really just throwing it in, but and that's time. But it's also I am really planning on coming back in with uh, more nuanced color later. So I'm just kind of I'm still more broadly just get color thrown in. That was too dark. Now it's too light. I'm going to do a first pass of, I'm going to switch to a bit of a smaller brush. I'm going to do a first pass of my light. And I'm just going to use white right now. So this is just white. Um, yeah. Um, do you want me to, yeah. It, so we were watching a Greg Simpkins video. He, he was painting some birds. And uh, we noticed something cool that he was doing. Um, he would throw down pure white massage it to where it needs to be and then come back over and it was such a it was a revelation so Dave and I've been using that a lot yep I'm fairly transparent with my white right now. White's an opaque color, but I'm going thin. Sorry, I'm way over here. Part of the problem, okay. But I'll be able to build it as a result. You can see right there, I could build it quite a bit heavier and then I just use my other brush to kind of smooth that in. So it's a process. If I throw it on really thick right now, I end up kind of cornering myself again. I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna kind of be building to it. And the brush I'm using right now, I shouldn't be using. 
what you're using. This is uh, an inking brush. It's a um, Series 7. I'm using it with acrylic, which is like sacrilege. But you know what? That's what I got. Again, that's what Greg uses. Is it? Yes. I didn't remember. Oh, see, look at that. Copying him without even meaning to. He's very brave. Those brushes are super expensive. It's like yeah. 40, it's like 40 plus dollars for a, a pitch mill one size. But yeah, they're, they're well, up I've, got a, I've got a lot of them because I was using them to ink, you know, and uh, I don't ink that way anymore. And so they just kind of sit there and I might as well use them. It'll hold a point very well, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. mm. There's lights on his chest. Hmm. You said Quinn Magenta, right? Her lights on his chest? Uh, well, I used... Um... I'm going to use Ultramarine. Okay. And... Oh, what did you, you, you grab? I think it was Quinn Magenta you said, right? Uh, well, it's one of them anyway. It was what? It was one of them. I didn't, it wasn't just oh. three. Lost Jason again. No, I'm here. I'm multitasking. Okay. Well, I'm going to read the chat. Let's see what we got. <clears throat> Fair enough. It's not much. All right. <laughs> I'm keeping an eye on it for you. Hey, what, did you hear my hiccup? Sorry. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> I'm start, trying to stay hydrated. <clears throat> well, we're streaming a little late tonight, too. This is... It is a little on the theater side. So it's starting to come together a little bit more. Like, it's it has a little ways to go, and it's, you know. But just starting to get that white in there. Um, really starts to separate things out just a little bit more. And it's going to be basically two more passes, of just kind of going around and um, sorting those things out. Uh, Bet's asking on, uh, is there any tips on keeping your patience while working on such a detailed piece? Um, I, you know, honestly, I really enjoy doing it. Like, I, this is very relaxing to do. I, I will say I, I'm being very loose. So I, I think if I was being a little tighter and a little bit more um, like really, really precise and trying to establish every color perfectly, I, I'd drive myself crazy. So that would be tougher. But as it is, I'm loose enough that it kind of keeps me going. And so now it really is going to start to be more of a, a case of, of refining and actually getting my proper tones. Because the, the tones are kind of still all over the place a little bit. Uh, it's a bit of a mess. But now I can start to really um, hone in on it just a little bit more. And this is something, Erica, I'm really trying to learn is, you know, just how much I can, how close I can get at any given pass. And the be willing to accept the fact that um, I can only I can only achieve so much. I didn't, you know. Yeah, kind of learned what you need, learned what you've learned, and then uh, move well, on. I'm not, that's not what I mean. I don't mean oh. learning. I mean just in terms of of trying to achieve the colors that are in here. I can't achieve it unless you know what I said. 
if I really knew what I was doing, if I was Eric Guest, maybe I could just throw that color right down and maybe go boom. But uh, I can't, and I'm, I find it, it's it's all right. I just need to be a little bit more patient with it. Yeah, you know? but, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Jim has a super chat for you uh, for twenty dollars. These look great. Uh, Dave, I'm curious. Have you found the work you put in learning, uh, learning painting to have an impact on your pen and ink work? I could see it leading to less rendering to allow for more expression of shade through color. Uh, thank you very much, Jim. That is very, very generous. I appreciate it. Um, you know, I, I don't know. That's a really good question. I um, over render. <laughs> Uh, obviously, and it's it's a really tough thing for me to just walk away from that. I think, so I, I don't know that I would, but I, I don't know. Like this is, look at how brutish some of those shapes are. See, this is where I'm really you can see just how overdone they are. Um, I I don't know. I, I feel like I don't have a good answer for that. Like right now, there, there's such a separation between this is my and my black and white drawing. Like I get lost in these shapes in a way that I don't with black and white drawing. I've been doing it for a long time, you know, black and white. Whereas with this, I I just start to just get lost and even lose sight of the fact that I'm I'm, I'm painting forms, which is not good. So, given time though, yeah, maybe. At the same time though, Jim, I'm very, I kind of made a career out of, out of the, the sort of rendering that I do. I don't know that I'd want to just, you know, go really simple and, and lose some of that, you know? It's very cool here, but I just want to lighten it up right now. And you are right. It is very transparent. That yellow. I'm trying to. Oh yeah, super out. transparent. It's been a little tough. I but think it I, must be the most transparent yellow. I don't know. It's so bad that it's really transparent, though. You know, it means I can I can kind of glaze into the shadow. It's perfect for glazing. Yeah. Things I would I thought I would struggle with the least. I'm struggling with more than I would have thought. Like that arm. Uh, this is where I'm more comfortable. You know, drawn arms, but apparently not now. Yeah, you know, that is true. Uh, drawing, drawing um, the underpainting and then it's just, yeah, painting and drawing is just, you know, you can have a comic style with drawing and then painting it realistically, everything goes out the window. Uh, to make it look right. There's and some people who are so good at it, but, you know. Well, there's Frazetta who did years of it. So he, he worked in comics for, for quite a few years. Then he did Lil Abner uh, ghosting for Al Cap, I guess. Is that right? I don't know. But he was ghosting for a while. Um, and I think, I want to say, like, eight years. I mean, a long time. Four years, maybe. Uh, maybe I'm exaggerating. But long enough. Uh, and then he tried to get back into comics when that uh, ended, and he found it really difficult. There were there were just no opportunities, and he was called old fashioned. Which, you know, this is Rosetta, but that's the world. And uh, and so his friend Roy Crinkle got him into painting, got him like a job, and kind of helped him out in the beginning. And so he went into painting, having really not done much of it. He'd done some. He'd done some sketches, and you know, it's not like he'd never painted. But not much, and yeah, just amazing what he was able to do. So I'm really trying to push some of that back. Uh, it's darker, but my shapes weren't right. So I'm going to have to kind of fix that little area right there. I'm in a weird spot where I'm just, I haven't, I haven't gone opaque in any shadows yet. So I'm kind of waiting for it to all fall apart here in a bit. Yeah. Let's see. Well, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start to get some of my bounce light in. Uh, 
see if that kind of starts to bring things together. I'm just going to roughly kind of get that purple in for now. And it's like he's he's got a little bit of it just kind of hit up into here. Maybe I'm just imagining that, but I'm just going to throw it in there. I want to soften that anyway. And it's very cool. Or, well, not that cool, but cool. This is so much harder than the drawing studies we did. Yeah. Much, much harder. You know what that means, right? What does it mean? You just got to keep, we got to do it more. Yep. Use that same purple just to kind of throw a color in here just to get it going. And then he's kind of going down toward purple here. And there's actually quite a bit of purple just in his leg here. So I'm just going to kind of rough it in, use my other brush to kind of smooth it in just a little bit so it's not overpowering. I think I'm still just a little bit light with it, which is why it, it reads just a little off. But I can darken it. There's a little bit of purple just right in here. And let's put it over here. Who knows where he's got purple? We're just putting it in. This is where things go off the rails for me, Eric. Yeah. I'm like, ah, purple here. Why not? Yeah, those subtle values, yeah. Yep. There is purple there for sure. Just like that. Maybe a little dark. Part of the problem too is we're using acrylic and it uh, has a real tendency to darken when it dries. I don't know guys, <clears throat> Frank made uh, his junk bigger, so get to it. <laughs> <laughs> the whole other stream to fix that. <laughs> some of that in here. I think his arm, because it's a little bent, is more purple here, and then it goes more toward red here because it's bent away from whatever that, that light source would be, um, and just a little more light. Just up here. What's next uh, convention you're doing, uh, Eric? Uh, me? Uh, I think Dallas with y'all. I uh, will pay. Dallas, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, someone's asking, are you going to CGC this year? I'm not sure what that means. Uh, last year I did a CGC signing. Oh, uh, in Ch in Chicago? No, in uh, at their office. Oh, right. Okay. Actually, I'm uh, getting them all the information for sometime later this year, so we'll probably do another mail-in. <clears throat> I guess when I said Dallas, that's Fan Expo. Yeah. Fan Expo, right. How far away do you live from there? Uh, about 20 minutes. Oh, okay. Once I start putting purple in, now I'm seeing purple everywhere, whether it's there or not. So I'm just throwing it in. But I can always kind of tone it back later. But I, I'm kind of seeing it, you know? So not in his face, but I'm putting it in there because I think it'll look good. Maybe that was a mistake. It was a mistake. <laughs> All right. 
So I'm using some orange, some uh, cadmium red, and then I'm going to kill it way back with um, my uh, raw umber. But I do want it to be pretty orange, just not overpowering. Maybe just a little bit of white, just to give it, it just a little bit of white really cools it right down. So this is what I've got. This is my original mix here. And mm -hmm. then I went with uh, the raw umber and now I added white. I had, might have added too much, but I can just bring <laughs> more in. Easy to do. By the way, I've forgotten to use any of my... Um, medium? Uh, not medium for most yeah, of them. that's right. So I just want to start to get some of the warms more clearly defined on his face and too wet. Because he's, he's looking very um, washed up. Let's see. Struggle bus a little bit here. Keep some things to fix. Yeah, that's how it goes. You can just go back and forth with this forever. And so, yeah, at this point now, I really am just kind of starting to inch closer to getting something that's working. Like, I, I want a little bit more red here. He's got it really there got something here. My shape in there really got lost. I'm not happy with it. I'm going to have to reestablish my um, my shadows. Okay. Let's this is insanely fun, though. It is. It always is. No matter how difficult it gets. And so because I have some white, this is giving me the ability to to get in there and, and actually get some coverage with uh, with some of this color. So it's it's not just disappearing into the darks. It's actually um, covering where I want to soften some edges a little bit too. And just to get rid of my hard lines, I just use my other brush. Even that really dark, it was a brown, but it's it's very dark, and I want to kind of kill that a little. So, and I can overall really warm up my shadows with this, and soften them down a little bit. And I'm going to go in and reestablish my shadows, but it's helping. You know what else is bothering me? What's Knowing that? that I didn't nail some of the drawing. <laughs> yeah, it's way too late for that. <clears throat> trying to do with micro adjustments with the brush. You, that's what you don't want to do. Yeah. Uh, well, I've got a little bit of that. Like I, there are places where not a hundred percent, but you know what? It's a, it's a study. It's never going to be perfect. But I do find at this stage, I really can start to angle closer and closer as I go. Um, ideally, <laughs> so, you know, you have a, uh, dollar 99 super chat from Allison saying you're making me want to paint more. Oh, good. Well, definitely you got to do it. I mean, it's a, it's a challenge. Um, we've had artists, we, we had Jeffrey Watts, who is, I mean, Eric, I mean, he's so good, uh, who they make it look very, very easy, but these are artists that have been doing this for years, so many years that it it starts to become easier. We're, we're not there. So you see the struggle a little bit more, but. Um, yeah, you kind of have to make some mental acquiescence that, you know, it's gonna come out a certain way and you just gotta, just gotta power through it. Yeah. It's not gonna be perfect and, and that's okay. Yep. Yeah, and I do find um, you, you, you get better as you go. For sure, you do. And uh, we're getting there. 
on the ball is asking, <clears throat> who is your favorite uh, comic book uh, painter? Simon Bisley. I did actually see a nice Bisley Batman painting, uh, cover painting this weekend. Oh, really? Cover uh, painting? Original? It was an original. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was a cover. But I mean, it was priced like a cover. It was like, <laughs> OK. So, yeah. so that's why I assumed it was a cover. But it was, I was going to, you know, I forgot to take a picture. By the way, I apologize. I'm not really talking into my microphone as well as I probably could be. These brushes, look at this. This is the handle. It just keeps going. And I'm a lefty. My microphone is over there, and it keeps hitting. So I, I'm either moving the microphone or I'm moving my picture, one or the other. And how much was it? Just tell me. I want to say it was like fifteen or twenty thousand. Yeah, yeah. In that ballpark. Yeah. But it was like a classic, uh, you know, vintage. Oh, look, it's worth it. It was, it was really cool looking. Okay, totally worth it. Um, something something that's odd to me yeah uh but is this part of his anatomy is the highest uh high, the the strongest light on the rib cage you know i would expect it to be up here but yeah yeah i uh, this is part of why doing these kinds of studies is so good though yeah. is it, it's um things that seem especially when i'm not as familiar with an artist and i haven't looked at frazetta i have but not a huge amount for a lot of this stuff for a long time yeah. and it can start to just get a little foreign yeah he's but, definitely done it for a reason uh, yeah. you know, he draws the eye in this way uh, yep. you know it's really pulling the eye and you can tell how you know sorry no one no one can see it how you know I, this is the lightest part of the whole picture and uh, yeah just master forward how he draws the eye there. Anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and, and start to establish some of my background in there. Um, and I'm just doing that because uh, I find it's easier for me to really start to get my colors. So this will just take a minute here. And I, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of averaging out all the background color. I'm not going to kill myself trying to get a whole transition through there. But I do want to get something that is basically similar to enough of an average of it that it gives me a sense of where I want to go with the rest of my color. Braver than me, Dave. Uh, I don't know. We got nothing to lose. You guys are all patient, right? <laughs> Philip says the light is coming from the left side. It's true. There's um, there's still reflected light coming from the other side, uh, which he does so well. Like he, he really controls his values from light source to light source, from light source to like secondary source. And he, this is something I think also I've been learning doing this is not letting um, multiple light sources overpower a picture. I'm going to go a little bit more blue just to change it on the other side a little bit. That was really blue. Ah, it's fine. Uh, what medium? We're using acrylic. Yeah. I can really kind of short my just doing this too, which is nice. What are we at? 1039. We're doing great. We've got lots of time. I feel like we're moving faster than our last study on, uh, when was it, Saturday? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, honestly, the toughest thing for this is just keeping talking. It's my nature when I'm painting like this. I just kind of want to just paint and go quiet. And so I'm trying to keep myself, like, remember, I'm on a stream. I'm on a stream. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm being a little loose here just to kind of get it established. Fix my drawing at this point. It's a little lighter up here too. I 
I find once I get enough of this in, it feels like he's in an environment, my colors and my tones start to make more sense. Definitely helpful to have a Frazetta picture to use, so I'm not having to actually think of what I want to put in the background for color. Yeah. Ah, it's fine. Yeah, I've neglected his mug. Now I've got to work on that. Yeah. So I'm almost done. This is probably a little boring. I'm sorry, but it definitely, it really helps. All right, I'm going to leave it there. It's a mess, but I don't want to get make you guys wait while I slowly kind of work that stuff in. So there's definitely some nuance going on with the lighting uh, through his chest and mine's a little um, not nuanced. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to get a, a relatively dark um, uh, color just to get in there. I want it to be fairly warm. So I'm mixing a couple of darks together. Basically my burnt umber uh, my ultramarine blue, and I've got some um, uh, uh, burnt sienna. It needs more. When How would you approach this in black and white? Uh, well, you can always, you know, drop drop the color right out of it and turn it into a black and white image, and then copy it, or just. Uh, yeah, then separate, separate it into three values minimum, I guess, and just yes. Then you're you're really just working on a grizzle, and yeah. there are places where like my my values uh, structure is not right yet. It really isn't, and so where things kind of don't entirely work, it's because my values are are not well enough established yet, and I always find that. So uh, black and white would actually uh, get me pretty far. Like you, there's a lot to be said for it because this yeah. is dealing with color. This is also dealing with the fact that my uh, my uh, values are wrong. So yeah, um, for a good example of black and white to color, Eddie Grenov, his um, robe that he just did, it's just incredible. He he goes from black and white and then uh, blazes, and it's just absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, that's another another way to approach it for sure. Now that I think about it, that uh, that light against the strong dark like that is a very actually a very powerful technique. Uh, Eric Guest is actually amazing at that. Mm -hmm. uh, he places these strategically in his paintings. Uh, there's a Thanos that he did sitting on his throne, and he has a lot of these super bright lights right next to a you know almost black shadow, and it adds so much visual interest. So it wouldn't surprise me if uh, that's what was going on here. Yeah. OK, I'm cheating. Here we go. Where is it? Carbon black. And I'm using my black here uh, just to mix in with some of my color, because I've got the color that I want. I want it a little darker, and I don't feel like fighting with it. So I'm just going to throw a little black in there. And then I'm going to throw a little bit of um, burnt sienna in there so it's not just overpowering. But he's got a shape here that I, you know, wet. Hold on. Shape here. And then it comes down. And then another shape here. And I just wanted to get that properly established. Now it's too dark. <laughs> I can't win. Ah. Here we go. Let's fix that. All right. I'm going to kind of come in here and see if I can get this properly separated out. Kind of lost my core shadow here. This starts out a little darker here. I'm gonna soften it out there.
Uh, to make any color dark, you add its complementary color for the red. Yeah, you can do that. Um, you can also cheat <laughs> and add ivory black. It's a nice subtle way to. Yeah, obviously, yeah, you got to be careful. Uh, raw amber is very good at uh, darkening and desaturating. Whole bunch of tricks, but yes, complementary colors. Yeah. How did you like the China GP? JDSUT is asking Henry German. <laughs> it was incredible. It was a great race. Except for Ricardo, man. That was a good game. I was glad. So Daniel Ricardo, he's been struggling. And uh, he's back. He did great. And then he got knocked out of the race. Yeah, did so well, you know. <laughs> man. It was uh, uh, a what can you do? I'm just making up the hair at this point, just to kind of. I'm reaching a critical mess here, Dave. How's that? Um, Getting to the point where you don't so know. So much to work on, and I have no idea where to go. Uh, All right. And so uh, I've kind of established some darks there that are way too intense. And so now it's a matter of kind of going in and use a little bit of white and warm it and try and solve that problem. And this is why I don't use black. Here's yeah. me getting impatient. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm really uh, giving myself more trouble. But I can always go in, like right now, and just kind of surgery it a little bit. And uh, yeah, we are getting pretty close to, I think, um, having this wrapped up as far as what we're trying to get out of just you know getting the study kind of running um darken this leg just a little a little warmth in here I need this to be just a little bit lighter i'm gonna add just a little white because it's cool too A little darker you shouldn't use black i don't think that's very good advice someone in the chat saying don't use black yes you can mix chromatic blacks for warm and cool and sure but to say never use black i disagree okay yeah i'm going to disagree but at the same time you guys all saw what happened when i just did that right like yeah that i mean you can't just go super black or it totally didn't work for me. yeah i thought oh yeah cheat code here we go i'm just gonna you know throw this in and i ended up with trouble like that did not work. So, you know, fair enough. <clears throat> we lost our host. Oh. Ah, uh, Jason's on mute. Maybe uh Oh yeah, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> I guess I was talking to myself. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <clears throat> yeah, there's some artists that we respect big time that use black, including in shadows, so yeah, absolutely. But, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah, it's easy to abuse and turn, you know, go muddy and. Yeah. So I really lost the form kind of in here. I'm a little disappointed, but. Um, I still have another layer of, of light to get on here, so we'll see how. See if I can kind of recover some of that. I'm going to establish some of these shapes just a little bit here. Uh, still very dark. Yeah, that is dark there, but it's just it's too dark. And here too. And that's really now just trying to recover from that little bit of black. I thought, oh yeah, no problem problem we're at the uh, 10 minute mark all right so i'm going to go back in with some white and reestablish my lights
can have maybe just a little yellow to it. So I'm not going harsh, harsh white. Even though it looks pretty harsh white, I don't want to just go directly there. And you really can start to get your picture back. This is like, ideally, if it's working, if the value structure generally is working, this is where things really start to um, pop. So hopefully it will. Because I'm using yellow, I still have, look, this is a really light but there's a lot of yellow in it. I still have white to kind of aim up to in just a minute. Last few places, and then I'm going to go in with white, and we're going to call this a day. It is what it is. Yeah, I'm putting the brushes down. And you know, ultimately, every picture that we've done has kind of gone this way. Yeah. Like there just comes a point where I'm like, okay, well, I did the best I could, and we're going to walk away. Yeah, you chalk it up to a lesson learned. You move on to the next. Yeah. Yeah. So what have, what have you guys taken from this uh, experiment? Um, I mean, aside from like the glib for that is hard, you know, um, his warm browns, I thought would be a lot easier for me to, to, uh, emulate and I, I'm finding them really difficult. Like it's, it's been a yeah, struggle. He's, uh, he's clearly a master for good reason. Um, he's into play of just different hues and it just works. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's just uh, truly a master. Yeah, he really is. So yeah, um, but uh, I find every time I'm finished with one of these, I have time to think about it too and really yeah. kind of get my head around just where what I kind of learned from it and what I learned that I I need to keep you know working on the thing is I could just keep painting my own stuff and never do this because this is hard like it's, it's a struggle to to do this uh, I saw something interesting Dave that uh Dan DeSantis posted on Instagram yeah he, uh, <laughs> he really internalizes things that he should improve on to such a point where he'll take almost like, I think it's tape, and he puts it on the painting where he, I, can, where he knows he that. can improve. Yeah, pretty pretty interesting. And, you know, that's coming from someone who's, you know, for all intents and purposes, a master. At their yeah. Um, well, part of that, too, is, like, he'll see, oh, there's, a, like, a little, there's a scratch here or whatever, and he wants to make sure not to miss it, and you you do forget. Actually, I've, I um, have worked with inkers that, that used to do that. They put little post-its like, oh, you know, I need to make sure to fill in that black. And if you don't do that, you'll kind of forget. So I think there's that to it, too. Maybe I misunderstood. Uh, Anthony G, maybe I'm a bad critic, but I really don't see anything bad about these. I'm pretty impressed. Well, thank you. Um, definitely see stuff <laughs> um yeah but uh, yeah i mean you you know you don't want to beat yourself up but at the same time you know uh, just uh, try to see those things that need improvement and then work on them yeah the constant cycle 
I'd like uh, to see a Julie Bell study stream as well. She's the best female artist. We barely see her work reference. Yeah, she's amazing. Uh, that would be very difficult to em emulate. They're so precise with uh, their paintings. That would be uh, yes. very, very hard. It, it would be. I, I think it'd be a lot of fun. It'd be yeah, something to try. Is, she's incredible. Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah. It'd be difficult. Really don't like that cool transition there. You know what is occurring to me? Uh -huh. So I have this color called burnt umber. <laughs> I just never, use, I'm thinking, you know, some of these things are, are basically, and I, I'm using all these different mixtures to try and get what is effectively a burnt umber. I'm like, well, why am I not just using such a versatile color? So I'm doing that right now, and I think it's going to work. just to kind of bring things together a little bit. Is there a distinctive palette that screams for Zeta? I don't know. Yeah, I know. I know he liked the muted, the more muted uh, colors. Um, that is a good question, and I actually don't know. Um, and to be totally honest, this is like a, a bit of a journey of color study and, and just studying his work for me. And so I'm kind of, I, I don't really want to worry about so much what colors he used. I want to worry about what I can get from it. And, you know, if I can emulate it with other colors, it doesn't, you know, I'm not a scientist, I guess <laughs> is what I'm saying. So, yeah, just using burn umber. This is like, I could have done this an hour ago. Yeah, I mixed a lot of burn umber with uh, <clears throat> burn sienna. I've got some <clears throat> really rich uh, warms. So. Yeah, and this is what I've been trying to achieve, his rich warms, and I'm like, yeah, just fighting it. Meanwhile, burn umber is right there. Good old PR 101 pigment. Yeah. Any thoughts of doing an Alex Ross? Uh, Alex Ross study stream, Henry. Oh, That's another one that'll be super. Oof. We're doing it. I love that idea. That's going to be so difficult. That would be, uh, I'll tell you right now, that's beyond us because it's such a different style, too. Like, it, it'll be very difficult. But yeah, we're, we're doing We're going to do it, Eric. We'll have to lead up to that. Maybe it'll take us a little bit of time to kind of. Actually, uh, Brent Sienna's PBR7. PR101 is transparent red oxide. Dave, you'll love that pigment. Okay. Yeah. Have it somewhere in here. I'm telling you though, this it's totally working for me. Just, uh, just burn umber. Yeah. Doing PR one good color mixtures. And meanwhile, uh, Adam Garing. No, this has probably been answered. Is it acrylic? Yes, acrylic. Yeah, with uh, gouache. Good gravy. I don't know. Uh, I've tried to slow down some of his stuff <laughs> frame by frame. And I don't know how he, he's just a master with boy. Alex Ross say. Yeah. Uh, One um, minute. There's more. some wiz wizardry going on. Oh, we got a minute. Um, gyro, Hyro, I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm really sorry. Uh, I think you finished with colored pencils. No, actually Dave and I have been trying to steer away from that a little bit. Um, this is pure paint. This is, uh, and now we would finish with color. Now, paint. Like, yeah. I'll tell you right now, like I'll, I'll use any trick in the book, Yeah. you know, but, um, but for these studies, we've, you know, that's right. These are, these are studies. So it's, it's yeah. a different kind of a thing where I'm not worried about the finished product. <laughs> I mean, look, both Eric no. and I, I think we're worried about the finished product in the sense that we don't want to embarrass ourselves in front yeah, of Yeah. Now we, we did use but, color pencils to put some of the shadows and stuff and dark umber has been working great for us. Normally we would use black, but black is just a bit too harsh. Even though you can hue shift it, this is a lot easier uh, mm -hmm. to modify with paint. So we'll mm -hmm. new paint over it. And this is Prismacolor, dark umber. All right, that's going to be it. That was uh, fun. We're going to call it there. Uh, I, I'm looking at it and I think I mean, there's still nuance that I could get. And obviously it's it's a sketch, right? So it's it's not as as uh, 
as refined as it could be. But uh, I got a lot out of that. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. And I, I got a lot out of it that I feel like I could repeat. So uh, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, Would you do it again? Yeah, well, I'm definitely going to do more. I can imagine doing this figure again. And that's something that we haven't done yet. Sorry. Um, something we haven't done yet is, um, yeah, I can see so many places where I'd, I'd like to spend that another hour and really, you know, get this, this um, worked out a little bit. But I'm not going to do that. But yeah, doing this again, I, I think I would learn more. And I haven't been doing that. And I, I always say in tutorials, you know, you really need to, to um, do it a couple of times to really get a sense of it. So I, I think, yeah, you know, maybe uh, maybe we get this one going on again uh, at some point. Give it yeah, a try. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, <laughs> we're going to call it there. That's it. Thank you, everybody, for uh, spending Monday night with us. We're a little bit later today. Uh, we started at nine. I, I just keep finding it a little difficult to get everything done. My son is, uh, he's got extracurricular stuff. And by the time we're, we're all wrapped up with that, we needed a little bit of a later night. So thank you everybody for, for coming uh, just a little bit later. And I hope you enjoy this. I hope some of you are, are giving this a try. Um, it's a challenge. <laughs> so much harder than just painting something uh, myself, you know? Uh, and I'm sure Eric would agree, but yeah, yeah. what a fun. Yeah, we get more out of it, uh, I think, every time. Eric, yours, yours turned out really nicely. It looks great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it was a lot of, really a lot of fun. And uh, again, I hope, I hope those watching will, will, you know, paint along and try these in their free time as well. You, get, yeah. you, you get so much from it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thanks again, everybody. Have a good night. Thanks. See you, Jason. Thanks. Good night. Bye, dude.